Hi, my name is Greg Hoyland. I'm an engineering manager here at Daimler Trucks North America. I'm currently sitting in one of our test trucks at one of our test facilities in Portland, Oregon, fine-tuning one of the new features we're bringing in the 2020 Cascadia. This new feature is two digital displays that replace the traditional instrument cluster and the traditional radio on the B panel. We're bringing a 12-inch HD display that will replace the instrument cluster and a 10-inch touchscreen head unit located in the B panel. Both displays are operated via steering wheel controls that allow the driver easy access to the different menus and information on both displays. The buttons on the outside of the steering wheel are similar to what we have today. On the left side, you have the cruise control set and resume. You have the quick access button, marker interrupt, cruise control cancel, and a back button for the instrument cluster. In the center is what we call the optical finger navigation. And this is what detects the movements to control the instrument cluster screen by swiping left and right and up and down. The steering wheel buttons on the outside of the right steering wheel pod control volume, phone, and mute the radio. The optical finger navigation on the right side controls the head unit screen by swiping left and right and up and down. So let's take a look at the gauges in the left stack. When navigating to the left stack, you'll see the left side of the screen highlight to indicate to the driver that that stack is selected. They can then scroll up and down to select the gauges they want. You have your traditional gauges like oil pressure, coolant temperature, axle oil temperatures, and transmission oil temperature. Each stack also has an option to be empty to give the driver a minimal view if they so desire. In the right stack, we have additional information for the driver about how the vehicle is performing. You have both segments for trip and leg uh, available. Using the left steering wheel button, you can center press and then navigate between both the trip and leg segments. They can both be reset independently of each other. In the right stack, we have the fuel consumption uh, instantaneous bar graph that gives the driver real-time feedback on how the vehicle is operating from a fuel efficiency standpoint. Next is our audio menu, which shows the driver which audio source they're currently listening to. This can be AM or FM. This can be Sirius XM, USB with a connected device, Apple CarPlay, or Android Auto. Using the left steering wheel button, the driver can change the source or change the station. The next menu is the phone menu, which shows previous calls and dialed calls. The driver can make calls directly from this menu, keeping his hands on the wheels at all time. And then we have EcoDriver Feedback, which gives a readout on how the driver is using the vehicle. Uh, the three categories for EcoDriver Feedback are acceleration, braking, and cruise control usage. We want to help promote cruise control usage in our vehicles as that's the most fuel efficient way to operate them. The center of the display is designed in a way that allows us to maximize the space and to put the safety systems front and center in the display. We've designed the speedometer and tachometer in a radial fashion that then gives us more space to show how the safety systems are working. Safety systems like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, traffic sign display, and side guard assist. On the right side of the display, you'll notice a triangle. That is to indicate the status of side guard assist. When a vehicle is in the blind spot, it will turn amber. When the driver has signaled to the right and there's a vehicle in its blind spot, the triangle will turn red and an audible sound will be heard. Like in today's Cascadia, we have a quick access button. This allows the driver to change vehicle settings. By pressing the steering wheel button, you can change the headway control for adaptive cruise control or the lane centering for lane keep assist. By using the left OFN, you can swipe up or down to increase or decrease the headway following distance. Swiping left and right allows the driver to change the position that the vehicle will stay when in lane keep assist. The next menu is for cruise control. This allows you to change the upper hysteresis, the lower hysteresis, and then a new feature with the 2020 Freightliner is dip coast. By pressing the center button on the left steering wheel control, the driver can then increase or decrease the speed tolerance. The third option is to change the idle speed. When the vehicle is running, the driver can swipe up and down on the left steering wheel button to increase or decrease the engine speed. 
When designing two digital displays, we had to be cognizant of the amount of light output from both displays when drivers are driving at night. One of the things that we did is we put a light control filter on the instrument cluster display to prevent light reflection on the side window, which can interfere with the drivers seeing their mirrors. During the daytime, in high ambient light conditions, we put an anti-reflective coating on both displays to minimize glare. Both displays are equipped with an anti-glare covering that reduces glare to allow the drivers to be able to see the displays even with direct sunlight on both displays. Here we are in the settings menu on the head unit screen and we select brightness. We can select the instrument display, the infotainment display, or the head unit, and then we have the dash brightness which controls all of the backlighting in the vehicle. If the driver wants to adjust each display individually, they can do that by selecting the menu in the head unit and then using the slider to increase or decrease the brightness. Overall, we have large icons that allow the driver to easily select those for the different menus. In the four corners, we have what we call hotkeys. In the upper left, we have a home button, which takes you back to the main menu. Lower left, we have settings. I can press the back button to go back. I have digital switches in the upper right, which allows the driver to turn on and off different features in the vehicle. And then I have a favorites in the lower right. Favorites like a radio station or a phone number. You'll also see that there are hard keys at the bottom of the display. The hard keys are similar to the large icons we have in the display. The driver can swipe through these using touch or using the right steering wheel. This allows the driver to have full control over the head unit while keeping hands on the wheel at all time. The first two buttons are for previous and next track. You can also scan through your radio stations using these buttons. We have a gauges button and there's also a digital icon for the gauges as well. This allows the driver to see more gauges than what is shown on the instrument cluster display. Driver can press the button to scroll through the different gauge menus. By pressing back, I can go back to the main menu. Next is the cab graphic. I can press the cab button. Here I have digital switches, optimized idle, there's an alarm clock, and the settings menu. Next is the chassis menu. The chassis menu shows information about inner axle and differential locks, maintenance system, which is a new feature we're bringing in the 2020 Cascadia, the diagnostic menu, and alerts. We have the lighting menu, which allows the driver control of exterior and interior lights. On the interior, there is ambient, dome, and footwell lights for both the forward portion of the cab and in the sleeper portion. A new feature that we're bringing with the digital displays is navigation. This is onboard truck-specific navigation hosted by TomTom. With the new head unit, the driver can pair their phone to take phone calls and to play music. By pressing the phone, the driver can then connect their device. Once the device is connected, then the driver can take phone calls and play music through Bluetooth. In the radio app, we have Sirius XM, AM, FM, and weather band. One of the exciting new features that we're bringing to the 2020 Cascadia is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. By connecting your smartphone to the USB port, you can start Apple CarPlay. That allows drivers to have access to their phone while keeping their hands on the wheel. Now after going through all the features in both digital displays in the 2020 Freightliner Cascadia, I hope it's evident how much we kept the customer in the forefront of our mind when designing this system. From the safety features in the instrument cluster to the comfort features in the head unit, such as Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the ability to control interior lighting, check on vehicle status with the additional gauges menu, truck-specific navigation. We have worked tirelessly to make the interior of the Freightliner Cascadia driver-centric.